Hey there YouTube, I'm Yukitsu, this is Yukitsu Times, welcome to my channel, welcome to some Total War Warhammer. So, we're continuing along just talking about the mechanics of the game, and we're going to get into one of the sort of more advanced ones now that we've finished talking about really what was basic things. So, we're going to talk a little bit about spellcasters and more advanced heroes at this point in time. So, um, most characters in this game, uh, well I wouldn't say most, there's a lot of characters in this game that are perfectly mundane. We have the General of the Empire, Carl Franz. Captain, um, Empire Captain as examples here. These guys don't have any particular abilities that would not be familiar to a Total War player. Uh, they're basically morale boosts or they're sort of uh, activatable abilities that make them a little bit more competent and we, um, for a short period of time or their auras that boost your units. These are things that we've seen before in other Total Wars. What is a little bit different is spellcasters or spellcaster-like units. And these are units that have unique or uh, semi-unique abilities that are a little bit different from what we've seen before. An example is, of course, Belthazar Gelt, um, the Imperial Wizard uh, of Alchemy or, or Gold Magic or whatever you want to think of it as. So you'll notice that he's got a very large number of abilities here, and these are spells, essentially. If we look over here, we've got this um, sort of uh, list of spells, and we can look up what they do. An example over here is Final Transmutation. He's casting it. As you can see, it has a long channel time. After it goes off, uh, it deals heavy damage in, in an area that's better for assassinating single targets than it is for attacking uh, a large group like that. And then you've got things like this. And every wizard follows one of the different lores in the game, and you can see the list of them here. There's Big Wa Magic, there's Lore of Light, Lore of Metal, Lore of Death, Little Wa, which is for goblins, Lore of Heavens, Lore of Vampires, and Lore of Fire. So. Each of these sort of different abilities uh, or lores of magic have their own spells. So there's a lot to take in, there's a lot to learn, but basically you want to know that most lores have a certain set of types of spells, and a very good representative example of something people actually like taking would be the lore of death. This is a very popular lore. So this would be an example of a hex, uh, minus 16 leadership, very basic, but pretty good for trying to force a unit to route. The problem is, of course, that once the duration runs out, uh, that unit will rally and then it'll come back into the fight, but it could be very good for taking a key unit out of a fight for a short period of time, especially if it's a high damage, low leadership unit like trolls or something of the sort. There's Soul Blight, which is another hex. This one affects uh, more or less the weapons and uh, melee combat skills. I prefer this over uh, Doom and Darkness, but neither of them are what's really that interesting. Then there's Aspect of the Dread Knight. This is an allied effect. The Cause Terror thing could potentially be useful, but uh, again, not too interesting. This is the Purple Sun of Zerius. This one is one of the direct damage spells, and this one damages a large area. Um, vortexes like these are pretty interesting, but not that commonly cast because of the uh, relative low power of them, so I wouldn't worry too much about using them. Next up is uh, Spirit Leech, and this is what people ultimately use. Spirit Leech is extremely powerful against a single component. Uh, opponent. You cast it on one individual target, like say the enemy's general, and it will cause huge, huge damage to him. And then you've got the Fate of Juno, which is another spell that I like. You cast on a single uh, unit, and that unit takes huge, huge damage. Um, better against large units as opposed to uh, single targets, because it deals damage per person in the unit, not damage uh, to the individual person. You can see it's sort of wiping that unit out there, but uh, that's sort of the different kind of spells that there are. There's also some spells that are just direct missiles, so if we looked at this, uh, we got something like Piercing Bolts of Burning, which are uh, just launched, if I recall. Actually, no, this one's from above. Where the hell? It's Fireball. Uh, Fireball's the one that uh, just, you launch it. So you've also got ones that travel in that sort of linear line, affect an area, the pretty fast cast, but uh, it's basically like an artillery piece. And so those are sort of spells. Um, and you've also got characters like the Witch Hunter over here, and you can see that he's got this ability here called Accusation. And this works a lot like um, a lot like the Leech Life spell that I showed you earlier. It's a single target ability, uh, very, very close range unlike the other, but it does huge damage to an enemy, for example, general. And this means that Witch Hunters are used as assassins, essentially. The last one is the Warrior Priest. These guys are kind of weird. Um, they've got Soul Fire. This is the, these aren't really particularly spells. They're kind of weird that way. Um, but they've got a bunch of defensive boosts and buffs. I don't honestly see these guys very often, but... 
uh, you, you could take them for these sort of buff effects or, or for soul fire, I guess, if you really wanted to. Honestly, I would much rather just take a wizard, but uh, the warrior priest, I suppose, has better melee statistics. So every faction has got some characters, but some of them are missing things. Like if we look at the dwarves over here, they don't have casters per se. The closest they have is the runesmith, who works more like the warrior priest. As you can see, he's got a bunch of these defensive buffs that are actually quite good. Um, and he's got the Rune of Wrath and Rune, which is a target ability, but it's not a particularly good one. Um, so, you know, this guy's not quite a caster. Um, neither is the Master Engineer, who buffs artillery. And the Thane is, of course, just your generic combatant. He's a very, very strong generic combatant, but he is just a generic combatant. Um, and if we were to look over at the... Bretonians, we'll notice that they as well do not have any assassination spells. They've got the uh, damsels over here and the only things that the damsels can use are the generic uh, lore of heavens uh, stuff here. If we look here it's the lore of heavens. And the thing that's uh, bad about this lore is that it's got three area of effect channel spells, uh, or four actually, four. Common Cassandora is an area of effect bombardment spell where you call down a big old comet does a lot less damage than it should, at, I honestly think, given how long it takes for you to cast it. Uh, there's Urinon's Thunderbolt, which again is just, you you cast this and lightning comes down from the skies. Hits a very small area for very high damage, um, but not high against individual targets again. Uh, you got Chain Lightning, which this, this one's actually really wonky. I don't really know how to properly aim this one, honestly. But again, Ball of Lightning starts moving around at random. Then I think they had another one. Wind Blast. Yeah, this one, this one is a projectile sort of thing almost. Doesn't really do that much damage, but uh, also has, has strong friendly fire. So uh, this leaves the dwarves and the Bretonians in this sort of weird state where they don't have anything that can assassinate generals. Um, if we were to look at the greenskins, We've got uh, the Orc War Boss, or sorry, the Azag the Slaughterer is the War Boss. Uh, he's got the Spirit Leech because he's got the Lore of Death instead of the Big Wah ability. But even if we took the Goblin Great Shaman, we've noticed that uh, he's got Vindictive Glare, and this is actually quite good at assassinating generals as well. And of course, you could also just use the Night Goblin Shaman, who's also got that. You just don't want to take the Orc Shaman. Um, well, actually, you could use Gaze of Mork, but I think... Th I'm not sure which is better, honestly. Not 100% sure. Um... If I recall correctly, I thought Vindictive Glare was, but maybe I'm wrong. Yeah, yeah, Vindictive Glare I think is the little bit better one, because uh, typically you want to aim upwards because a lot of the generals are going to be flying. It's just a thing that a lot of people take. The Empire, uh, they've got access to the Light Wizards, who have a good, strong, single-target uh, spell here through the Shem's Burning Gaze, and of course they've got the Witch Hunters. They've also got Belthazar Gelt, who's got the Final Transmutation, which while a little bit harder to aim, is extremely powerful at uh, taking out as an individual target as well. Um, and then you've got the vampire counts over here. Lots and lots of vampires have good single target abilities. Um, forget what the hell it's called for them. Let's just go into this browser here. Gaze of Nagash, here it is. Uh, this one works okay against that uh, sort of single target. You can go ahead and plug away at uh, an end of individual enemy there, but you could also be using uh, someone like Manfred von Karstein. As you can see, he's got the Lord of Death, and that gives him Spirit Leech. You could also get a Vampire over here, and as you can see, Vampires have the Lore of Death rather than Vampire Lore or Undead Lore or whatever, Necromancy, um, and they've also got Spirit Leech. So you can use them as Assassins as well, uh, even though they look like they're wearing makeup. That looks really, really weird. Kind of weird. Um, so... Yeah, the, the magic effects that a lot of people are using currently are those assassination effects. So, uh, Warriors of Chaos, if we look over here, we've got access to the lore of death just through their generic stuff here. You could also go for Final Transmutation instead if that's your preference. Um, personally, I prefer the, the Spirit Leech just because it's a lot easier to use, but you could use that to assassinate using uh, when you're playing as Chaos. Now, of course, they seem to be somewhat cognizant that... Uh, the lore of death is a lot more powerful because they've charged a lot more for the lore of uh, death wizard over here. So I guess that's just sort of the way of things. Now, you can also use your generals as uh, monstrous units here. A lot of them have access to things like the Manticore here, which changes their statistics. You'll notice that um, he's got 2,594 normally, goes up to 3,000 when he's on the Manticore, and this gives him 
Uh, flying caused terror and uh, that sort of ability there. Um, this makes it so that units sometimes run away from him, of course. It also changes him uh, to a flying unit that uh, deals pretty good area of effect damage. So the, the only thing that's sort of bad about this is that if I were to put him on, say, a Bardic Casteed, that's when his armor is the highest. His, his armor is actually really low when he's on the Manticore because it sort of averages between the armored combatant and the Manticore itself. So not really the best necessarily. If we were to take an example of the uh, Chaos Lord, he's got similarly uh, the Chaos Dragon or the Manticore, so you could get a decent amount of flyers out there. Um, and you'll notice that we lose the armored trait if we go onto this Chaos Dragon here, and uh, our armor actually drops very, very significantly again. So it's actually higher on the Manticore, which is a little bit odd. Um, not 100% sure why that is. This also has flaming attacks. Uh, there are very few units I've noticed that are actually vulnerable to fire, but that doesn't matter too, too much. So that's sort of the way that you can look at uh, your, your heroes. You can either think of them as character assassins um, currently, or you can use them for something else just for the fun of it. You could fling fireballs, um, do that sort of thing. You use the burning skull. Looks like that's taking a little while to load up there. Let's uh, do it this way. So, like, you could just do this because it's kind of fun. It's actually really quite bad, but, um... I, I mean, just look at that. Look look at that. I mean, isn't that fun? Um, so, yeah, we're, we're gonna go ahead and pick a uh, battle here. Use a little bit of our heroes a little bit more than we have been in our other ones. And try and do an okay job. Now, you'll very often see Undead playing with a little bit more serious uh, hero compliments, but... They're pretty important for every faction in some respect, uh, or your characters being casters or, or magic of some sort. There's no real point in wasting that Winds of Magic unless you're dwarves, because of course they can't utilize it. So I think that this is going to be one of those weird little balance things though. There's going to have to be some sort of fiddling possibly. Alright, let's go ahead and pick the Vampire Counts, because I feel that they are sort of the hero e faction. Um, they're playing as orcs. We're going to go ahead and pick Manfred von Karstein, and we're going to go ahead and put him on... Do we want to put him on the Undead Dragon? I think we want to put him on the Zombie Dragon. And, um, we could go ahead and get additional heroes here. Like, we could get a White King, or we could go ahead and get a Vampire mounted up on a Hellsteed, uh, which flies, basically. But we're not going to go too, too crazy on the uh, heroes right now for this particular matchup. So we're up against orcs. I feel that against orcs it's a pretty appropriate thing to get a decent number of grave guards with great weapons just because they've got pretty decent um, units for dealing with that. We're going to get some Cryptors because I think that they're super super strong. I'm going to go ahead and get... Do we need Vargeist against orcs? I don't really feel like we need Vargeist against orcs. Let's go get uh, four units of zombies just as a blocker or as a distraction sort of thing. Actually, let's go ahead and get some Vargeists as well. And then we've got uh, some points left here. We'll up the number of these guys that we've got, and then another zombie or something like that. So Manfred is um, a caster, and he's actually a pretty good one. He's got the assassination lore. Um, he's armored. He's got good weapon strength and all that other stuff. So he's very good in melee combat as well as being very good as a, uh, as a spell caster. So why is my... Deployment sounds so much more narrow than my opponents. That's a little bit weird. That's a weird part of a stellion tomb, right? But um, yeah, so spell casting is going to be something that you're just going to have to get used to. Uh, the spells do have dramatic effects and can be game swinging at, in the current state. I do think that the individual target spells either need to be toned down a little bit, or honestly, I would just like it if they cost way, way more magic and they made the area of effect ones a little bit more viable because right now things like vortexes feel like they don't really do much. You know, in retrospect, I probably didn't need to take Crypt Horse and Graveguard with great weapons. That was probably a little bit overkill. Uh, I'm a little bit worried, of course, against facing off against a lot of orcish uh, black orcs because that's what I think a lot of people take right now. But in retrospect, I, I probably should have been assuming I was going to take uh, be fighting against some savage orcs as well Sort of that mix I find is quite common. Well, we'll see how things go. Cryptors honestly aren't that bad against things like Savage Orcs or Orc Biggins or whatever. It's just that because of their armor piercing and they're not armored themselves. Oh, they've got a giant on their team. Interesting. 
Yeah, the giant is going to actually be um, really good against me. I'm going to try and tie him down with zombies. He'll absolutely crush zombies, but um, it does give me a little bit of leeway. All right. All right. Interesting. So if we look at our opponent's army there, he had a ton of shooting there for some reason. Uh, fortunately, we did have a couple Black Knights, which are good enough against that. He, let's see here. He had a, a chariot, trolls. He basically had all goblins. Night Goblin Big Boss and Night Goblin Great Shaman. So he could have just uh, tried to plug away at me, but I pretty easily could have killed a Goblin Great Shaman just by using assassination spells. They're not particular. Oh, I guess we're... Uh, hmm, nope, we're not doing this. I, I don't uh, want to do a 2v2 for this example. All right, so we'll try. We'll we'll try this again, and we'll go ahead and maybe take two spellcasters this time. But one of the things you need to know is that the wind's magic is a generic pool. It's not a per caster one. So taking more casters doesn't necessarily get you that much more magic. Um, in some cases, like there's an ability that lets you channel more magic, but it doesn't actually uh, do a whole lot necessarily, in, unless uh, you get a lot of time to use that ability over and over and over again. So let's go ahead and pick these guys again. Let's pick uh, Manfred von Karstein. I like putting him on the Zobby Dragon, just personal preference. Go ahead and uh, pick up a Vampire on a Hellsteed, I think, and that, that should be okay. As you can see, though, that is a lot of points. Um, it does chew through them quite quickly. I just want to see a little bit what uh, my opponent might be taking there. We'll start taking an army uh, set up here, just in case, if he is indeed playing as Bretonia. I find that... Um, Crypt Ghouls are actually pretty good for dealing with their infantry without uh, being specifically counter-cavalry. We'll go ahead and take some of these Skeleton Spearmen in case he's got a lot of those sort of things. Um, things like Vargeists are actually really important against Bretonia. The gate, they can fight very effectively against their Flyers. Uh, we'll go ahead and try and have uh, some Black Knights. Oh yeah, he actually is playing with Bretonia. Okay, well, we'll take some uh, Black Knights with Lances. I think that they're a very good unit against uh, Bretonians. Now, we are going to have some uh, arrows coming at us inevitably, but that's okay. These guys will just sponge up some arrows for us. These guys will be able to do an okay job beating up on the uh, Bretonian peasants. And we'll see what they've got for knights, but... Um, we got a little bit of uh, quality from the Skeleton Spearmen against Bretonian Knights. And of course the zombies will be just there to get in the way or what have you. Now the nice thing about this particular fight is that uh, since I have got Vargeists and I've got a general with assassination abilities, my opponent doesn't have too much um, shooting. I can just simply fly my characters over there and start plugging away at him with spells. And in particular, I feel like sending my vampire to do that is a really, really great way of uh, spending them. Because realistically, um, there's no retaliation that he can mount against them other than to use tons and tons of ar archers. And if he kills my hero, I don't really care that much since it's just there to unload a bunch of spells, which is what it's going to do. So this is our Winds of Magic, and you can see that um, it recharges at the set rate there that's given, and uh, there's a certain amount that you can sort of get before it just sort of runs dry. Um, so you want to be a little bit careful with how you're using the Winds of Magic, but it's, uh, it's a pretty generous pool. You'll only rarely ever be completely out of the stuff. And you'll almost never be out of the stuff on the short term. Like, you'll usually have enough um, to cast whatever you sort of want there. Alright, so these guys put there and there. And we'll go ahead and pop our vampire over here. Now, Manfred is unique in that he has two lores. There's a little icon here that lets you switch between them. So that's how you do that. And let's go ahead and uh, start up, I guess. <coughs> So if we look over here, we can see that our uh, Vampire does not have the ability to re recharge mana faster, but uh, I believe Manfred does. 
Yep, Master of the Black Arts, improve power recharge rate, increase the power reserves. So you cast this as often essentially as you can, and it'll let you uh, sort of get away with certain things here. What do we got here? We got, uh, looks like three field trebuchets. Hopefully they'll be attacking mostly zombies, but uh, that would be the dream as it were. Alright, so he's got Knights of the Realm over there. We're just going to start rushing our lines forward. Now he doesn't have any archers, so what I can do is simply bring my uh, vampire up to the front here. We're going to go ahead and use a spirit leech or what have you on these guys. And the reason is that uh, she's much more expendable. I'm going to also go ahead and uh, use Fate of Juna on these guys. I don't have anything that deals with those guys, so we're going to go ahead and uh, hit these guys with it. It will deal a lot of damage to them. And then I'm going to put a charge order on them with my uh, terror geists. Alright, I hit them with the spell. Alright, so we're just going to start casting this on their general. And as you can see, his health is going to slowly start going down. Um, these guys, as you can see, are pretty much all dead from that fate of Juna. They're down to seven men, so that got rid of them, essentially. But it did take a considerable amount of our Winds of Magic to do so, so. Alright, we can see that there's a spell there, so we're going to go ahead and halt for just a second there. Just going to cast another one of these on his general. Alright, we can continue advancing. Alright, so he's got lots of lots of knights here. This is actually these are yeah, those are all knights of the realm, I think. It's not too big a deal dealing with knights of the realm, but uh let's go ahead and bring our zombies forward to bog. Alright, so we'll go ahead and uh use another one of these on his general here. Master of the Black Arts. Alright, so we've got one of those guys out there. This gives me an opportunity to try and go for these things. Let's see if we can get uh, into melee with these guys here. Just walk these guys into them. Alright, our vampire over here should go ahead and finish off that general. I should be able to kill him with one more of these. We can get Manfred into this fight right directly here. Get into this thing. Now, as you can see, our skeletons and stuff like that are doing what they do, which is being a complete nuisance. They don't actually fight all that well, but um, they are quite okay as far as... Alright, let's go ahead and uh, see how things are going over here. Let's get a charge in on these guys. Terror guys got completely uh, wrecked over there eventually, but... This guy's still alive. Alright, so that should kill their general. Alright, so... I'm gonna try and get these guys airborne. I don't want them up there. Some Knights of the Realm over there. Let's try and get rid of them. So you can really see the effects that magic had in this fight here. Now, the uh, vampire is actually pretty okay in melee combat, so I'm not too afraid of throwing it into melee against its paladin, especially when it's bogged down by as much crap as it is. Um, what are you doing? Just get over here, I guess. This will probably go our way pretty quickly at this point. Let's go ahead and charge these guys with Black Knights. Alright, 
Let's uh, also recharge. As you can see, this is our reserve. This is the amount that this can fill by. So this is going to take a long time to fill because the only way I can refill it is with the Master of the Black Arts. Alright. Let's go ahead and charge into these things. Nope. Let's actually get at this thing. We surpass Nagash. Very well. Uh, I don't know who to cast this on. Witness true well, whatever. Not going to worry about that too much. Let's get our vampire. Continue using that. So, the fact that my opponent has lost his morale from all of that stuff that I've been doing, um, for example, killing his general, um, does seem to have made a big impact on this fight, and it does in a lot of cases. Undead in particular tend to do that sort of thing, they tend to be quite good at it. So if you're up against them, it's hard to protect your general, there's very little you can do to do so. Oh wow, they've really come back and rallied. Alright. Back up to 7, which is pretty okay. And it looks like that damsel is in distress, so... I'll we'll charge into these guys, just get rid of them. Skeleton Spears are actually quite effective against Knights of the Realm in terms of cost-effectiveness. So, there's that. Our Black Knights are going to be in a bit of trouble here, but that's okay. I really need more of that Winds of Magic. So, yeah, keep in mind that you do not have unlimited magic. This little bar here is going to be the reserve. So it doesn't matter how long, really, I've got. It takes a long time to recharge at this point in time. Uh, you can see that our PowerPoint reserve has 12 in it, and we've got 9 in the tank there. So, oh, let's go ahead and speed that up a little bit. So we can change that, and it'll uh, go up to a reserve of 17, recharges once every 9 seconds. So... What I do kind of want is a Fate of Juna, or maybe even a Purple Sun, but um, we'll have to see how things go. I could also just assassinate this uh, Paladin here, actually. Crush the, breathers. Crush the Breathers. I'm not sure if she's saying Breathers or Breeders. Either way, kind of mean. Alright, let's go ahead and get our General over here, attacking these Knights of the Realm. These flying characters have a, a tremendous knockback animation, essentially, when used to kill um, smaller units than them. Although even like the horse over here, you can see it has a good knockdown against that damsel because she doesn't have particularly the best ability to negate that, so... Let's just go ahead and get everybody over here. Alright, there we go. Pyrrhic victory, but uh, still, still very effective. Our generals had uh, pretty much, our, our heroes had very little done to them. So, yeah, that that's heroes in this game, and they're tremendously vital to use in this end, and the way that you use them is also very important. Um, since our opponents, King Lone Leoncord, couldn't really do anything in this particular match, since those mounted yeoman archers got hard countered so quickly, uh, really negated a lot of the strength that they would have otherwise have, and as well, killing the enemy general just has a big impact on their morale that makes it a lot easier to beat them otherwise. So it's an important thing to know about, it's an important thing to utilize the magic and uh, knowing how to negate that. So anyway, I hope you found this video enjoyable, and of course, as always, I hope to see you all next time.